Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, working with the Trail Power um, System Analysis Model. Now, the System Analysis Model uh, is the model that comes after the Operational Analysis Model. And uh, we'll basically uh, do a couple things. We're going to review the capabilities that are chosen to be delivered by the system or product that's on this uh, in this Operational uh, the System Analysis Model. We'll show how the capabilities are delivered through a system architecture diagram. And we'll create a new system architecture diagram uh, without the developer uh, entity that's in, involved in the previous uh, uh, sections of the class. So let's go to the operational, the system analysis model. So here's the the compiler user interface. I'm going to go in. I'm going to open up the Trail Power example. Uh, I'm going to launch the ARD file to open the session. And then you'll see here the the, the traditional view of the different process steps of the methodology. Uh, we're going to go into the system analysis step, and you'll see over here the various diagrams. Uh, these are the steps of the actual methodology. In this case, they've already been executed. And we're just going to go in and look at a couple diagrams. Uh, the first one we'll look at is the mission capabilities diagram. I'm going to open that up, take a look at it. And you can see here now this these are the uh, capabilities that are delivered by the system. And so we're looking, we've narrowed the scope from the problem of operational analysis now down to the actual system that's going to be delivered. So the system in this case is the trail power. Uh, we're going to provide 24-hour visibility. We're going to connect to a USB device for cable. We want to disconnect the USB device from the cable. We want to charge the USB device, generate power, and monitor the, the, the operation remotely. Yep, again, that's this typo that came took care of last time. I'm just going to go ahead and take care of that again uh, here. Now, these objects are completely new objects uh, compared to the operational uh, analysis. They are now in their own model called system analysis. So they have been brought over or transitioned is the term used uh, from the operational analysis into the system analysis view. So you can change these now independently of the operational analysis and no work that's in the operational analysis will be impacted by changes that you've done here. Uh, however, the capabilities that you have when you look in here, you can browse the different views. And so I just looked at one was the operational capability. I can look at the, the user object. And if I look, use the semantic browser, I can see that that user object came from the operational capability uh, and was realized by it. Uh, and so that's over here. So there's the operational entity called user. It was realized from that mode. So that's an independent object from this object. Uh, again, the USB device, you can see that it's been realized from the USB device in the operational analysis. Um, same with the sun. Now, the sun is actually new. We introduced the sun in this mode because the decision kind of has been made that we're going to use uh, solar power. So there's some, you can introduce ideas into this mode that's that are not in the original operational analysis. In this case, a decision has been made to use solar, so the sun actually has been introduced as a an, an active an entity in this mode. Again, the developer is still in this view. We still have properties, and you can see here the various properties objects, and you'll see here the realization object has been, this is how we go about realizing things, and we can see that it's been realized, but many of those objects, these realization relationships are made automatically from transitioning from one phase to the other. Uh, to a large extent, most of them are made that way. Now here's, this is the operational capabilities view. Now we actually go and look at the uh, the system analysis architecture view, which shows how we actually go and realize all of those uh, operational capabilities into uh, functions uh, or system functions. So here we see that we have the charge USB device, which is a, pur a purple flow. You can see that the produce uh, the sun is used to produce light. It converts light to electrical energy, which then is charging the device, which then to the USB device that accepts the charge. So this basically, this capability, this uh, system function, as they're called here, is basically realizing the the, uh, com the capability called USB charge device. And you can look at that here. You can see that, okay, that's realizing that capability. Uh, that's the functional chain for it. So uh, we're gonna basically going to you know, see that that uh, is what it's actually realizing for that capability. So each capability then now, and we'll look at it again here from this view, uh, here's the charge USB device, and you can see that it has involving capabilities called the US charge USB device and generate power as a capability. Uh, if you look at any of these here, you'll see that again, 
that the system functional chain is now real, realizing a particular capability. So you can look, click through these and see that the relationships have been made so that you can see what capability is being realized by each functional chain. That's a very powerful part about the, this methodology is the fact that it ties tightly the, the capabilities that you are looking for from the system to the actually deliver of the, the delivering of those capabilities through functions that the system provides. So now we're going to go and uh, look at a few more things. We're going we're to get ready to basically create a new diagram. So in this example, though, you'll see that I have multiple diagrams created already of the system architecture. Uh, I've got one that's just focused on the charging the device. So I just have a subset of the of the fun of the functional chains here, and there's the charge USB device one. Uh, here's the trail power connect and disconnect. So again, you might do this if you want to emphasize um, just a subset of the system for someone who's viewing it, not see the clutter of all the different um, functional chains on it. Now, adding a functional chain is quite easy. You see here, this actually has the entire diagram, and I just have eliminated some of them. I'm just going to go here and add a functional chain to this. You can see over here the insert tool that we had seen in the last video on operational analysis. I can go over, drag it onto the diagram, and it gives me the list of all the possible functional chains. So in this case, I'm just going to add the provide 24-hour visibility one to it, and you can see it's been moved across and then it shows up on the diagram here. So you can add functional chains that easily. Uh, there's no change to the graphics in any way. It's just part of the object model. And that object model of the, it shows it right up over here. Again, as part of the system functions, you'll see these functional chains show up in the object model of the system. So I'll just jump over. Let's go, let's say we want to make a new diagram. So we're going to go through the similar steps that we did for operational analysis. I can just go here and clone this diagram. So you see I have clone of the system architecture diagram. I'm going to make a change to it. Uh, you can do that a couple different ways. I can go the rename here, or you can see that the F2 key is active for that rename capability. So I'm going to go in here and make this change to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically make one for user only. Only. And we'll remove the developer uh, from this diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and now open up the user only diagram. Here's the user-only diagram. So I'm going to eliminate the developer from it. So to do that, I'm going to basically uh, delete this flow here, uh, delete from diagram, and that developer is going to go away. Now you see the other items of the functional chain. And this is one of the, the powers of the functional chain, is it basically shows me that this function here is only there for the developer. You can actually see that through this yellow line. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and remove that one from it. And I'll delete that function from the diagram. Now, that object has not been removed from the model but that's over it here. It's just been removed from this view of the diagram. And then I'll just finally go and get rid of the uh, the, the functional chain that's here so that it's not in the in the view. So I'll just go over here and do that. And I'll say monitor remotely. I'll just move that to the left-hand side. And now you see that it's removed from the diagram. So now I have all the views just for the diagram itself. Uh, for uh, the user, so all the things that are involved with the user that's needed. Okay, uh, so that's that's basically an overview of the system analysis diagram. I'll just close up the model, and I can save that model um, very easily. So I'll just hit the Save button here, and it saves all the changes that I made to the model, including that diagram view. So if I go back to it, I see the, the user-only view is connected there. So I ho hope you enjoyed that little demonstration of how you can work and use the system analysis diagram. Uh, thank you very much.